seated. Good morning. Good morning. You know, um, say I remember when we talked about getting rid of masks, he would be able to talk, and I'd be more aware of when people were here. And um, I think everyone um, has forgotten how to talk, so, um, or uh, my hearing's gone or whatever, so. Good morning. Good morning. Glad to see everybody. Good to see you. All right. As we are gathered here together at Woods United Methodist Church, both um, here in person and online on the video, we appreciate having everyone to share together with us. Um, I'm uh, Pastor Mark. If you um, are watching online and don't know me or I haven't had a chance to get it, it's, it still feels like the first year, you know, like your first appointment there. Um, just with trying to, um, everything keeps changing and it's different. But a few announcements as we get ourselves going this morning. Uh, the flowers up today are given uh, to the glory of God and in loving memory of Bob and Dot Danielson, whose wedding anniversary was the 16th by the girls. So, um, yeah. Um, also, um, we have... Um, but you're going to come and give a report on the farmer's market? Yes, I am. And you want me to come around? Uh, can I, I, I can see everybody. You're, would you like for me to come around? I would like <laughs> Y'all can appreciate that I'm following directions, can't you? <laughs> We had lots of fun yesterday, lots of fellowship, lots of people bought. We like for people to come and buy at the farmer's market. What makes it so neat is people stop and talk. People that we have met, this may be their first time coming, but they will stop and they'll visit a spell. And, and back in the day, you would visit a spell. So it, it would be successful if we didn't do any of the baked goods and the many, many things we had going on yesterday. We had vegetables everywhere yesterday. We had squash that was as big as I think I've seen squash. Um, we had nine tables that were being used and Sue and I may have counted wrong on this, 11 vendors, I know we had nine. So I miscounted somewhere, so 11 uh, vendors, and I had the privilege of working with Bruce Wilson, and we were the managers, and we had 41 customers, but if you will add on what all the vendors buy, you would find you would have 50 or better probably every single week. You could add um, 10 more on your numbers. So. Uh, a good week, uh, people are still inquiring about being vendors. Uh, the young couple, if I may take a moment to share since you let me come out here now. <laughs> um, the young couple, Kyle and Carrie, that uh, feel they have the privilege of uh, living in Bernice Skank's home mm -hmm. are such a joy. They, they do the chickens, they do the honey stuff, they do the vegetables. I ate something yesterday that, to the life of me, I do not know what it is. In my 74 years, I don't remember seeing it, but I bought it and brought it home and fixed it up, and it was good. Some type of vegetable, because they said they got it out of the garden, so I assumed that it wasn't a chicken and it was a vegetable. Uh, many people coming in and are beginning to get the word out. So also get the word out that with the rain the way it's been and the sunshine, we look to see more vegetables come in. Thank you. Thank you, Pat. You won't ask me to come up here. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Don't dare me. I'll have you up here more than you think. Um, so, all right. So uh, we're, we're um, <coughs> glad, um, even if you can 
come out for a, uh, just a little bit. Uh, it is, it's a good time. Um, yeah, I'm talking about the vegetables. I, I thought she had bowling, yellow bowling pins over there um, for a little while until I realized they were squash. Um, so, um, yeah. Um, the, 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 yeah. The, 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 the Lord is being fruitful, uh, be, is blessed the world, and the world is multiplying. Please take part in sharing in its bounty as we go. Um, a, a little note, you'll see a little thing about this in the, in the newsletter, um, but I just want to say that I know for some people who especially don't have cell phones, it's not always easy because my cell phone is an out-of-area um, number because where I got it before, um, I'm getting a local number to make it easy um, for, like I say, especially some of our older members who it would be a long distance call to get me. I don't have that yet. When we get that, we're gonna put it out. I am not going to put it out on Facebook or YouTube just because I'm not opening up that wide like that. Um, but we will get the ways out so that you'll have it. You'll be able to get a hold of me. Um, if you need that, you can call the church um, and say, hey, and I can get back to you and we can get the number to you. So, um, but I just want to let people know that, kind of give you a heads up. So um, that, that'll be, you'll suddenly see this number. Why is this person calling me? It's me. Um, I'm just trying to make it a little simpler for some things. So uh, we'll have that together as well. All right. Um, those things said and um, set aside, we're going to take a time now to set our hearts and our minds in an attitude of prayer and praise as we come before God this morning. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, we thank you for the day. We thank you for the gift of your presence with us. We thank you, Lord, for the gift of your spirit. Guide us now, help us, as we spend this time together with you, that we may grow in your service and love, that this time we have together with you may bless us and prepare us to go forward into the world to share with the others that we meet your great vision of hope and love. In your name we pray. Amen. Beloved, our opening hymn is number 369, Blessed Assurance. Please rise as you are able. Let us join together to say Thank you. 
Please be seated. Our scripture reading for today comes from the book of Ephesians, the first chapter, the third through the fourteenth verses. Ephesians chapter 1, beginning with verse 3, we hear these words. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love. He destined us for adoption as his children, through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of his will, to, be, to the praise of his glorious grace that he freely bestowed upon us in the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace that he lavished on us. With all wisdom and insight, he has made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, that he set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time to gather up all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. In Christ we also have obtained an inheritance, having been destined according to the purpose of him who accomplishes all things according to his counsel and will, so that we, who were the first to set our hope on Christ, might live for the praise of his glory. In him you also, when you had heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and had believed in him, were marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of our inheritance toward redemption as God's own people, to the praise of his glory. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for the gift of your Spirit that leads us and teaches us. Let that Spirit guide us now. The word we hear, the word we share, be your word for us, O oh Lord. In your name we pray. Amen. Where do you belong? Or with whom do you belong? You ever think about that? You may think about, boy, I don't belong here. You ever been in that place? Not intentionally, of course. But you ever in that place, you walk in, and you're suddenly like, wow, I do not belong here. I'm just going to keep on going. I'm sorry, ladies, I'm going to pick on you for just a minute, but I've had moments when I've been the only guy in a crowd of like five or six women, and I've realized... They've had some things they needed to say about men, and I was in the wrong place. Because men never talk about women like that. Oh, no, right? Yeah, yeah. But I was always in place when I was there. I felt comfortable. Being in place, being in the place you, you feel like you should be, there, there's a comfort about that. There's a connection about that. Back March a year ago, we had to stop having worship services for a time, we thought, right? It was just, you know, we just kind of got to get things straightened out. Be a few weeks, we'll get things sorted out, we'll go back together. And we couldn't, and we couldn't. And we couldn't. And we found ways to, to address that. We found ways to be online with people. We found ways to, to communicate things with people. 
And I still would have people that would say, rightly, it's not the same thing. I want, I want to, people would say, I want to be in there only touching elbows. Somebody, when I was getting, when I was getting my, uh, uh, the call we meet with staff parish committee to, to get together to come to free. Cut. Okay. So every time you're appointed to a new church, you have that kind of meeting with staff parish committee to kind of touch base on things and whatever. And we had ours online and I had somebody, hmm, I had somebody, I had somebody that said, I'm a hugger. I can't wait till we can get back into church to hug people. We finally were able to get back into church. There's still no hug. Well. <laughs> I'll pretend I don't see it. No. Um, so my point being that feeling like you have that place that you can belong. And having the connection with people. Even if it starts off at a farther distance and maybe works its way closer together. In some ways having that sense of connection, having that sense of belonging is important. When Paul is writing to the church in Ephesus, he's talking about the blessings of the church, and he wants to remind the people there, he's like, remember, you have been adopted into this. You have been adopted into God's world. You have been adopted into God's family. Family is important. It should be important. We should have a sense that we have a place where we belong in there. And when we don't, we want one. If you feel cut off from your family, you want one. If you don't have a family, you want one. And Paul tells the people here, look, remember, you have been adopted into, you are inheritors of, you are a part of this family. Inheritors is an important part too, because if you think about a family, when somebody passes in the family and the family inherits, the others inherit, uh, that's a dangerous time because sometimes it can really divide people. Sometimes it can bring them together. Sometimes it can make people feel like they're excluded or included or whatever. You're included, he says. You have a place. And that family isn't just the people that you're with at your house. That family is the people you are with in God. And that means that connection is broader. It means that connection is worldwide. It's not just a connection that is in the household that you're in in the moment. It's not just a connection that's in the state that you're in or in the country that you're in. It's a connection across the world. I saw that really at work when my mother was sick and we're trying to take care of her there at the end. And I'm up here and I got a brother in Virginia Beach and I got one in North Carolina and my sister's in Georgia. My other brother's out in California and in, 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 in Oklahoma. And we're trying to all make these connections and put things around to try to get things taken care of. And suddenly family was everywhere and we were coalescing together to try to get, try to get word in and, and get things done and see what we needed to do. Why in the world would God want us as family? When you think about it, you say, if you could pick some of the people in your family, don't, don't look at anybody if you're related. I don't want to know. Don't say any names. Don't start any syllables. But you know, if, if you had that person in your family that you could maybe... Have them sit on the other side of the bench. It's all I'm saying. Um, we are not the best bunch of people in the world. That's why we need God. We need a lot of help. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, 
who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. He's made us seem okay. He's passed along the word to everybody. Psst, they're all right. Let them in. Okay? <clears throat> Just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love. We would know how to love and we would know how to care. That we would know what it means to look out for one another. Loving somebody is about thinking about them first, putting them first in your heart. What's going on with them? How are they feeling? What are they saying? What are they doing? What is today like for them? I want them to know that they're important to me. For the foundation of the world, we're brought to be holy and blameless before him in love. He destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ. We didn't just get to walk in part of it because, you know, we felt like it. We didn't get to go into God's family room and kick the door down and go, here I am. He picked us. He picked us. He found us important enough that he wanted us to be, to have somewhere to be, to be a part of, to be held. He destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ. Why? According to the good pleasure of his will. We didn't earn that spot. We didn't make that spot happen on our own. He said, I'm just that kind of God. I'm just that kind of God that I care about you. I love you. I put you together for crying out loud. I know what you're like. And I have said it's okay. I know how to help you. Trust me, it's okay. But I don't want you to be alone. I don't want you to be forgotten. As we have this sense of it feels like we have this sense of the world that we are, we've, we've made this big turn and we're stepping out of the, of the pandemic. The reality is COVID is still there. The reality is a new variants come up. A new variants are always coming up with things, but they, we've, we've made that sense of we're, we're getting the vaccine working. We're getting that out. We're getting new ideas. We're getting things. So there, there seems to be this kind of sense in that. And people are feeling a little bit more comfortable in going out. And some people feel a little more comfortable going out without your mask on. I can't figure it out yet. I've gotten so used to having a mask on, I feel weird without it on. And what they're coming to realize is just how emotionally draining this has been on people. They're starting to really appreciate more than ever the, the toll of people's spirits. I mean, people have not paid attention to depression or anxiety issues like they have needed to for a long time before this. And now suddenly you're seeing that come up in a lot of different places. We're seeing it more prevalent. Why? Because people have gotten to feeling like they're on their own. They're lost. They're, they, they don't matter. They're forgotten. Whether that's because we're depressed, whether that's because we're left outside, whether that's because we don't have anybody in our family around us anymore, whether we don't know anything about our, our original family or whatever, whatever the case is, that moment that you, you feel alone and lost and trapped, it leads down to a very dark place and a dark hole. And it can lead you into 
leads you into some bad thinking. Paul, talking to the church in Ephesus, knowing that he's got all these churches around him who are struggling with this understanding of what it means suddenly to be a Christian church, knowing that the disciples have still had to work out that idea of what it means to have had their, their Messiah killed and then suddenly appear out of nowhere. There's all these questions about it, and he's like, this could make you feel like you're on your own. This could make you feel like you're lost. This could be a little overwhelming. You try telling people about this, and they're, what are you, it's the stupidest thing. Are you worshiping one God or three gods? Well, no, it's, it's one God, but there's three parts, and it doesn't make any sense. So Paul writes to them, he says, I want you to remember as we're talking about things that you have been adopted into God's family. And it's not like God looked at you and said, oh, you know, I don't do it. I'll die. God has planned on this ahead of time. When he was putting things together, he said, I'm going to need these people to be here. I know that they're going to struggle and be away. I've made a plan for Christ to come and to help them so that they'll have that sense of adoption and be a part of things. And he can help them through his life, teaching death and resurrection to be a part of the kingdom, to be a part of my family, to share in the inheritance. And we're all together. Yay. We haven't all figured that out yet. And some of us have caught most of it, but we forgot the part about how we got adopted because it was God's good pleasure to do it. Instead, we were like, I did it. I made myself do it. So now I'm going to make others do it. Um, and we get all off track and we push our people even farther back out of the way. We don't want to do that. We want to remember what Paul was saying. Stick with Paul. Paul said, God said, I love you. I want you to be mine. I suddenly feel like I'm about to channel Fred Rod, uh, 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 Mr. Rogers. Won't you be mine? Could you be mine? Won't you be my neighbor? Right? I want you to be a part of the family. I have laid everything out that needs to happen for you to do it because I love you. I thought about that when I was reading the thing, um, uh, was reading the thing this week about uh, the the pounds and pet places, the number of animals that are being returned in that people got while they were trapped at home. But now that they can get out and go back to work and everything, they don't have any way to take care of them, and so they're turning them back in. And and the kind of the crisis that's in place in that, but it expressed again to me that sense of just what people were trying to figure out how to do, how they were struggling with um, being alone in that time. Um, one of the first things that broke my heart when we had to close down the churches at the beginning of this was when the AA, when the AA groups called and they said, but can we still meet? No, I'm sorry, I can't have you here, knowing how devastating that was going to be for them. Because if anybody models, and, and for you watching online and for us here, if there's anybody that models what it means to be family, I'm going to tell you right now, the AA and NA groups have a step up on the church. And my experiences with them and my um, working with them and stuff, I, I will tell you right now, they're, they're leading the way. And that's great. Um, let's, let's make it a challenge. We can, you know, do better. So, whose are we today? Whose are we? Are we God's people? Yeah. We can nod our heads. Yes. Right? Um, do we remember why? Because God loved us and adopted us and made us his. There is no separation. There is no difference now. 
We are part and together. One of the things I love about Paul is that Paul seems to come back around on things. <clears throat> so he said that we were adopted because God wanted us to be adopted. We share in this. Um, in him you also, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and had believed in him, were marked with the seal of of the promised Holy Spirit, this is the pledge of our inheritance. Start off the whole thing talking about we're inherited. We should have heard that. He'd say that several times, and then let me remind you. You've been through all these steps. Let me remind you, you've been through all these steps. You've heard the truth, the gospel of your salvation. You believed in him. You are marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. This is your pledge of our inheritance towards redemption as God's own people to the praise of his glory. It's not about us. It's not about you. It's not about you. It's not about you. It's not about any of you there. It's not about me. It's God. God loves us so much that no one should be alone. Are we ready to be a part of what it means to be God's family? Do we know what it means to be a part of God's family? Just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love, if we did nothing else for the rest of our lives but to try and figure out what it meant to be holy and blameless in love before God, we would have a life well spent. Beloved, let me say to you, seek God's voice. God is with you. God is here to stay. Listen for that voice. Feel for that, that nudge. You know, you catch that current suddenly in the air. You walk past one of the vents, right? Somebody's cracked that window open. You feel that little push, that little gentle, that feel of that for the Spirit that helps us. And if you can't feel it, you can't hear it, you can't find it, remember, you're part of family. And we can work together to get it done. You're part of God's family, the family that should know how to work together and get it done. Let us as God's people, as God's children, as God's inheritors adopted by Christ, let us remember always to share God's love with those around us, starting here and moving forward from there. Let us pray. Gracious and heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for today. We thank you for the grace that you have given to us. We thank you, O Lord, for the spirit of adoption that you have laid upon us. Help us, O Lord, to take nothing for granted. But help us to know always, O Lord, that your love is there for us. It is there for everyone, for the whole world. So let us act like it. In your name we pray, O Lord. Amen. I want to take a minute to offer up um, a few prayers, um, both uh, from our community and from um, uh, the world around us. A couple that I do want to lift up that I have up here. Um, one of uh, Brenda's twin granddaughters, born in April, uh, appears to be having trouble with her eyesight. Uh, she'll be seeing a specialist in the coming weeks to uh, determine the extent of her vision loss. Please keep Sienna, or also known as Baby A, 
in your prayers along with her mom and dad, and I'm going to add grandma too. Um, so our, our prayers with them as, as they look and see um, to what extent they're really looking, you know, at what extent her vision loss may be or whatnot and what can be done about that. So we um, keep them in our prayers as well. Um, how's John doing? He's improving. He's improving. Yeah, when he gets real food, he's very improving. He's had blisters for three days. Sorry. All three days, and he got food. And we told him not to eat it so fast. He said, if I don't eat it fast, they'll come take my plate away. <laughs> Okay, for those of you who watched it and heard me just go, how's the guy in the hospital doing? And then I'm laughing at him. Um, let me be clear. Um, so, um, John Thurston's in the hospital, and um, he's getting better. We know he's getting better because he's getting real food um, instead of that IV stuff or whatever they give you. And, um, and he's eating too fast, almost, because he's afraid they're going to take it away from him. You have not been feeling well when you're afraid they're going to take your hospital food away from you. <laughs> Just saying. Just saying. I'll tell you that. You, you do that. Definitely. So, um, I'm glad, I'm glad, uh, glad to hear that he is uh, doing better. Yeah. Yes. Um, and uh, also, we do, we want to take a moment as well uh, to be in prayer um, for the family of David Duell, um, who passed away. Um, uh, Clara Dyson's oldest nephew. I talked with Clara you know, this week. Um, she she's doing really well with it. I mean, obviously, you know, you're anytime you have a member of your family like that that passes, but um, she still was was okay and doing well with it. She told me she actually um, really felt like she knew that it was coming. You know, she's she's I've, I've had that feeling before with different things, people, and I I knew this was going to happen. So. She, she felt some comfort in that, and um, she, by the way, wanted me to tell everybody say hello, and that she's hoping to be able to start coming back once they kind of work a few other things out. So um, we, we look forward to having her in here as well. Um, but I do want to have you keep her and David's family in your prayers. Um, are there others that we want to lift up? Betty Finkley. Betty Finkley? She's in Chippenham. She's in Chippenham. Okay. All right. I, I knew we were just talking about how she was here. We thought maybe she wasn't well, but she's a chip in him right now. Okay. All right. Um, I remind you that in the um, pews, we have those little um, uh, little index cards and the, the little pencils there. If you have prayer concerns or things to lift up, please write them down on those. There's a, a, a little basket in back for those um, that, that helps me with remembering and helps us to know uh, so we can check and see on how people are doing, so you can put those on there. Um, any others we want to? Okay. All right, let's take time to go to God in prayer. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for your presence with us here today at Woods United Methodist Church for your spirit that helps to guide us and to lead us, that has brought us together. Whether we are sharing this time here in person or whether we are sharing this time through the internet, I ask, O oh Lord, that your love would be upon all who hear your words, whether they hear them here or elsewhere around the world. We lift up to you, O oh Lord, this day, those names we have mentioned already, Sienna, John, David. For Betty, we ask you, Lord, to be with them in each of their needs, to help them and to heal them. I ask you, Lord, to be with those who are not able to be with us today. For those who are not yet able or ready to come back into church with all that is going on, but are able to watch on the internet through Facebook and later through YouTube, we, we are so blessed to have you share this time with us. 
for those who are unfortunately unable to be with us and unable to share with us through the internet, internet Lord, that we may find the ways to reach out and touch with them and make them aware that, that we, we know of their presence. We ask you, O oh Lord, to be with the churches across our district and with District uh, Superintendent Carey. We ask you to be with the churches across the conference and Bishop Lewis. We ask you to be with the Methodist churches all around the world this day, that we may hear your call to service and that we may serve where we are. We ask you to be with our brother and sister congregations. Though we may not exactly share the same doctrine, we may still find the ways to work together. Lord, your wisdom has been with us since the beginning. You have loved us, guided us, adopted us, taught us. You sent Christ to help us to grow. You have given us your spirit to continue our movement forward, to give us what we need to have in the moment that we need it. Right now, Lord, we humbly ask for the words that you would have us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For that is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Beloved, I'm going to invite you as you are able to please rise as we sing hymn number 370, Victory in Jesus.
Beloved, as you go forward this day, may God's glory be with you. Remember, you are God's child because God wants you to be, because God loves you. You don't have to prove anything. You don't have to make it work. Be God's child. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, go with God's blessing. Amen.